Hey everybody, I'm Seth. I'm Michael. Today we have our top 10 games that we learned in September 2023. Right, because we like to play all the games. games. So we're a, we're a day late because we were out of town. That's right. And you were adding another 100 games to the collection. I know, I know. So I, my friend was selling us some games and that I was going to help sell for her. And uh, so now I have a lot of work on uh, work to do. And yeah. some of them I want to play. That Yeah, same here. So we'll see them come up on these lists sometimes, maybe. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Though I do believe that all of the games on this list were provided by the publisher. Every game. You Every and I both selected. single game. That's pretty good. I mean, we've been playing a lot of review games recently because uh, Gen Con, we, got, we picked up a whole bunch of review games. So we've been slowly working through those. Uh, and so I expect now that uh, Essence Spiel is happening this week. Uh, we're going to get more games to try out, and there's just so much more that the, the cycle keeps coming, and I want to play them all. BGG is going to happen in November, so I'm going to be playing a whole I'm bunch of a things. lot on Oh, we got a lot. Review pile. We're very excited to bring Plus in the one games. that is, we have, so there was a game that, was, there were two games given to us by one publisher, and he said, yep. don't talk about this till October and this till November, so I took a big old Sharpie. And on the on That's the right. on the wrapping, I put O C T on OCT, one, yeah. N O V on the other one, because otherwise we're gonna forget. Yeah, right? I would forget. So, so that was a good thing to do. That was a good thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> we for have sure. not touched it. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, we've still got a lot to bring you guys. This month was really busy because really busy. I sold my house. A good job. And. That took a lot of extra time. Oh, yeah. He's been over there cleaning and mowing the lawn and making sure everything's very presentable. So a lot of that game and, time has been eaten up with making sure the house is out. Karen moved out. Yep. And, yep. And, then, and then the sale fell through, and then another one came right behind it. And yeah. finally, that whole process is done. Yeah. Moving stuff around. And now all four of us are psh, to the four winds, right? Yep. Um, but because of that, there were not as many new games played last month. I, I was at 43, and I believe you were also at 43. I was at 43. Yeah. And but they're different because I got to play some without you, and you played some that I had already played. That's exactly right. So well, his maybe best game of the month. I played many months ago. Right. And I actually, I thought I had one more than Steph, but I didn't because I'm going through my list. Oh, Decrypto. Yep. I've already played that. Yeah. I hadn't logged it on the phone yet. That's what I was thinking. So, that's yep. Happened. That's what happened. So, I'm, yeah. I'm right at 43 and you also are at 43. So, these pretty much are what? The best, the top 25% of games, right? Yeah. So, yeah, normally it, it seemed like a lighter month. I mean, 43 is a lot from a lot of people. I mean, it's still over one a day if you're looking at September's 30 days in the month. Yeah, everyone's like, how do you do that? There's I'm not like, that many days. And I'm like, we play multiple a, a, in a day. That and, but but to me, 43 is like, I feel like we didn't really play it. Uh, like, I feel like where's the other 20? Uh, yeah, exactly. Because a, a normal month for you is 50 or 60, right? So, you know, for me, I'm like, oh, cool. This should be an easy month, right? Right. But it was it, it was hard to figure out what I wanted to put in these top 10. Yeah. I also wanted to point out, I did learn a couple new expansions. Just the other day, we we, we learned uh, Cascadia Landmarks. So that, Fantastic. Was, that was a really great expansion that wouldn't show up on this list because it's just an expansion. I also got to check out uh, Caverna, the Fiend's friend. Frantic fiends, I think it is, and that makes it really hard. From what you said, wow! The I'm a huge Caverna fan. That's like a nine out of ten, ten out of ten game for me. I love it. Uh, the expansion is so tough. I think the I won with a score of thirty eight. And if you know Caverna at all, like my best score is probably like ninety or something. Mm, so wow! Significantly, it's very very difficult. So if you want to be challenged and you want the game to punish you, it almost felt like Agricola because so, it's punishing. Well, you played you played this with Drew of Meeple Grande. Yep, that was fun. And uh, he was two points behind you. I know. I'm not, he, that was his first time playing Caverna. And his first time ever, and she just threw him right in the deep end. Yeah, I'm like, we're learning this. Uh, the other two and he did just fine. Caverna, and they they liked it too. So uh, it was good. Good job, Drew. Good job. If you ever see this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so should we jump into it? 
Yes, we can. Um, I just now looked at the follows, and it looks like we were followed by Booty Tootin. Cool. Six hours ago. So, hi, Booty Tootin. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and start with my number 10. All right, what's your number 10? <laughs> it's not Booty Tootin. No. Um, I'm surprised this was not on your list. It barely missed. What? I know. A rolling right. I love rolling rights. Except it's not on your list. I actually had a pretty decent month. Well, okay. So it anyway. So close. My number 10 is not on her list. It is Newsboys by Sashi and Sashi. I mean, yeah. I love Sashi and Sashi. Their games are great. I, I always enjoy the their artwork style and seeing what they have to offer. So tell us about it. So on Newsboys, you are rolling dice and flipping over cards. The cards, both of us have access to. The dice, we roll individually. Mm -hmm. And so you can choose uh, all of one color dice plus cards, and you will do the same. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. because my dice are different, uh, are going to roll different things from her dice, we are going to spread out onto different areas of the the map, the little hex map. Um, and really, this game could have been anything. You start out from a central location, and then you go one direction or another, and just filling in different colored grids on the map. And there are bonuses for uh, going to little spaces with dollar signs on it or for create for uh, filling in all of a certain color all over the map or filling in one uh, of the quadrants of the map um, faster than anybody else. So ultimately, the theme could have been anything, um, but uh, you're basically trying to just fill in areas uh, on your map faster than uh, the other players. Uh, I think the interesting decision uh, that can be made on each turn is whether to take your dice rolls as spots on the map yeah. or to mark off things on what's called a strike counter. The strike counter is basically your newsboys aren't working because they are striking for better wages. And whenever... Uh, whenever a a set of colors has been claimed, you're going to score based on the lesser of how many dollar signs you've had on the map and what your strike counter is at. So if I have four dollar signs on the map, but my strike counter is at two, I get two points. If my strike counter is at six and my dollars are at four, I'm only going to get four. So you want to try to get a balance of strike counters and dollar signs on the map uh, successful deliveries basically yeah in order uh, and get both of those up as high as possible before one player triggers hey this is end of round one end of round two end of round three because that's ultimately how you're going to score your points for me i agree that the most interesting part about the game is how you're going to score those strike and income mm -hmm. points I mean, there's been tons of rolling rights where you fill in a map and try and fill in the area first to get extra points. That's been done. It's it's been done a lot. So for me, it wasn't like entirely a new game, which could could be why it didn't make my list. But uh, it's still a fun game, and it's one I want to play. We'll play it again, I think, on Wednesday's stream. So those are a lot of times, you know, you're when you're when you're taking stuff, you're taking one of the three cards, and that's how the difference is there or you're rolling dice and you all share the dice yeah or you can take one color and somebody else takes another color this one's a little bit different in that i'm rolling my dice you're rolling your dice someone else is rolling their dice yeah. and it's all the dice are different i like so. that they include cards for like that neutral player instead of rolling mm -hmm. dice each time just because it keeps track of how many t how many times like you're gonna go through the deck Yes. And then it's over. Right. So you can kind of gauge. The you, don't, you don't have area. to keep track. Oh, did we roll it? Did we mark the rolling dice this time for the, the neutral? Because it's one time through. Yes. Yeah, so it works well with the deck of cards. So mm -hmm. that, I thought that was well thought out, too. Um, yeah. So it's a good game. My number 10. Nice. News voice by Sashi and Sashi with the Sashi art style. I mean, that is clearly. I love that. Um, you know what? My number 10 is actually your number nine. Whoa, let's do it at the same time. I know. Uh, so this was actually a surprise. Not normally one that I might have thought I would enjoy. Because you don't like race games. It's a race game. It's a race game. I know. That's I know. amazing. I know. But so our game is Gemini Gauntlet. And so... By Lynn Vander Games. By Lynn Vander Games. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so 
for me, I, what I like about this game is that you have to puzzle out the best path, but your path could be disrupted. Yes. Because these asteroids are like going to be moving and you might run and into somebody going, else. Yeah, it's we go in order. Programming situation where you're planning what you're going to do, but other people are planning what they're going to do. Uh, so, and then two actions. Two actions. And so, what's really great about it is trying to puzzle out how to get to this location in order to get to the next location and then eventually get home. So, it is ultimately a race to get back, which I don't love. But even still, I like the process of what you're doing in this game. And how the asteroids are bouncing off of each other. Ultimately, you're trying to go through the past an asteroid that becomes a gate. Like your asteroid A is going to project this little line out to whatever is uh, until it hits an obstacle of some sort or the edge of the field. And if your ship breaks that plane, you have scored that asteroid um, and get through the four gates quickest. And you're not even sure which asteroids are the scoring gates. So you can't quite plan things out until a player has encountered the first or second or third gate. And then the next gate becomes made known and you all rush for that one. Um, the thing that I really like, can you guess what it is? That your ship can be damaged and you have to manage it. Uh, well, that is good, but that is, what is my, one of my uh, number one things on any game? Oh, asymmetric. Asymmetric ships. You got it. Asymmetry. You got it. I Asymmetry and ships. You can't trade her on people. So, I can. so um, when you are flying around in your ship, you might have a ship that that has shields. And so I can bump into an asteroid or I can bump into another ship and it not damage me. Or I can jump over obstacles. Uh, and some ships can't do that. Uh, some ships are very mobile, which they can slip, you know, one direction or another really quickly. Whereas, uh, I believe James's ship was really fast, but it couldn't turn. <laughs> uh, and so he could go really fast in a straight line, but then he can't turn around very fast. Um, whereas mine couldn't go very fast, but I could zip, zip, zip back and forth. So I could I not that. turn easily, but I could move like facing one way like going like this so i could like yeah you could side. flip stream yeah, i could like yeah. side step almost so it was it was it worked out well because i ended up winning but i i wasn't sure i was gonna win because james was well james here so was like oh my god i was just far in the league james was like a move away i know i got super lucky and and if an asteroid if i hadn't hit james twice <laughs> Uh, I might have been able to sneak away with it. Yeah. So it's good. It, it kind of gives me the feeling of um, Oracle Adelphi, but not. It's like a smaller. You're trying to plan out your, the where to go, and but there you aren't making deliveries or anything or doing right. all that. But it's it kind of gives you the same like feeling. You're working towards doing something in this race to get to the end. So I liked it quite a bit. Yeah. Pretty uh, pretty fun Gemini Gauntlet by Lynn Vander Games. Yep. So that means... And even liked by someone who doesn't like race games. I, I mean... Definitely worth checking out, right? Pretty good, right? Yeah. So You're number nine. So then we'll jump right into my number nine. It's a legacy game. It is. And uh, to be fair, I haven't actually played through most of it. You played through the first two. The first two. couple. Yeah. Uh, it's called Captain Pepe Treasure Captain Pepe. Ahoy. Hey. Captain Pepe uh, from Ahaba. They, I, I was a little bit surprised to see like a family kids uh, legacy game, but we've we've played them before. Uh, this one has a real time element where you're trying to puzzle out where everybody needs to go to stand next to their oars, uh, so it can get kind of hectic uh, as you go. You, I mean, so you can you go, I go, you go, I go, you yeah. go, I go as very fast as you can. Yeah, and because you, if you run out of time, you won't succeed in the mission. Um, but what? There's a the app that you can use uh, on the website browser that, that reads through the story for you. So that's really fun as a family activity, you know, to play this game. You learn, you get to know the characters. Uh, as you go, you open up boxes and uh, envelopes. Uh, so, so many things can can come from this game. Yeah. Um, I think if you've it's, got... It's fun exploration. If you, yeah, if you want to introduce your kids to good games, 
and um, more importantly, you know, introduce them to the wonder and awesomeness of a legacy game, opening up the envelopes and, oh, let's see what's inside this. Oh, let's see what new challenge this is. This is perfect for that. Yeah, so. for sure. I mean, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of fun. And so it's a great family game, a kid's game. So I don't normally put, you know, the kid's games up high, but I thought this was really well done. So, you know, I wanted to it shine a little, bit, unique. a little bit of light on it yeah. uh, because I think it is worthy of it. And, you know, if you have a family and, you know, want to experience something like that, this is a really good place to, to start. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. So that was my number nine. Your number nine. Fantastic. My number eight is a game from Cosmos. Um, and I, I, I guess this theme has been done to death. No. But disagree. <laughs> it's Lord of the Rings Adventure to Mount Doom. Uh, this is a cooperative adventure where uh, you are trying to roll dice in order to move your uh, your adventuring fellowship. Yeah. Of uh, Frodo and uh, Fro uh, what is it? Frodo and, and Sam. Merry and Pippin, uh, Legolas, yeah. Aragorn. And so you're trying to move each of these um, along the path, but you don't want your ring bearer to be in front because then your ring bearer could end up being attacked, right? So you want to keep your ring bearer back, which is Frodo and Sam, Um and you're trying to move everybody else along and to stop at the at the very end of the of the section that you're in because and once your ring bearer hits that that section that section is done and then you're having to move everyone forward past there um, but you so also get all harder cards if there's yes. more different encounters that come out and the and it gets harder, harder, and, and, harder. and harder and harder it's tough so yeah uh, it's a it's a it's a fun cooperative game. Um, it, there's dice rolling involved, and so you have to decide how you're going to use these dice. You're allocating these dice to do these different things, and you might not get what you want, but you might not have a choice. So right, uh, you do at the first it's the like, first roll, but the second roll you is like yeah. Don't. So you have to choose <laughs> which characters do you want to roll their dice, right? And you'll roll their dice, and you have to choose one, and then you keep one of them. Add in another one. Roll those dice. Ah, uh, is that really what you wanted to do? Uh, and so it's really, I, I like I like the puzzle aspect of it. Yeah. Now there's luck involved. There course. is luck involved. Now we beat it the first time we played. We got lucky. We got lucky. We, we almost got raided by Nazgul. Yes. I mean, we were they. I were, mean, they were they were on. they were they were finding us really quickly. Yeah. Um, but there are ways to harden the game too, like yeah. take away some Gandalf cards. And, and I'm interested in giving that a try because well, yeah, because you don't want to be able to just say, "Oh, we beat it," put it to the side. No, uh, you want to be able to bring it out multiple times to see, you know, can you make it harder? Like like pandemic, you know, you beat it on normal difficulty, add in another pandemic, then you will definitely lose. So. And so it's I'm enough as it is. <laughs> right. And so I'm I'm interested in giving this uh, a harder try because yeah. we did win. That's true. So Maybe on stream we'll we'll give it the harder try. One notch up. So. Still still worried about that. But yeah. <laughs> so that is my number eight Lord of the Rings Adventure to Mount Doom from Cosmos. And uh hey, we've had a booty tootin sighting. Ah! Hello, booty tootin. Hello, Gibbs. Hey Gibbs. We're um, on your number eight my of the number month. Eight. The the number eight game that I learned this month is called. Where is it? Uh, World uh, Wonders from Arcane Wonders. Yes, we actually played this on stream just the other day. Yeah, we did. Uh, and that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it it has a lot of things I love. I love the World Wonders. Mm -hmm. I love the little pieces in this game that you make up your own little map of all these like cool wonders, and you're trying to like build the road to get to the places and fill up your map to do different conditions. There's different goals to work towards. Uh, I know you love the draft. Things. It has a lot of things. It's not it. a draft. It's a 
purchase draft. It's a purchase it's draft. You're spending money to uh, to gather these different tiles that are up for grabs. I know you so, love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I wish we just had more money. Yeah. Then we could draft more. Only seven. I mean, a lot. It's, it's almost like, oh, I didn't get to do everything I want to do. And there's only 10 rounds in the game. It's fast. So... Um, you, gotta, you gotta spend that money wisely. But I know you do have a little bit of heartache with this game. Like whenever I snatch something away from you that you were were counting on <laughs> for this game, and I just hate draft it away from you. Rude. Yeah. So that's rude. that's what I do. It's a nice game though. Yes. So uh it's probably worth checking out. Absolutely. Arcane uh wonders uh uh, put out a really fine game with World Wonders. Hey, yeah, that's right. Wonders is in the title. And I know. Her name? I told Bree that she should get uh, Arcane Wonder as a Wonder promo. That's right. Wouldn't that be fun? I think. I think <laughs> maybe they could have a Senor Azul. Oh my God! No. In in one of their games. You, Come you on! Can't do it. You gotta do. Don't don't give Senor... the puppet yes. more praise. I mean. Um, He's already got a big enough ego as it is. Ah. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, so we are on my number seven. It That's your number seven. We have the same number seven. We have the same number seven. And that is Life of the Amazonia from Bad Comet. Look, that's so pretty. <laughs> I love that bird. <laughs> so. It's a good game. It's a bag building game uh, where you're managing your resources that you pull out from your bag. Uh, and then you're going to like purchase terrain tiles or you want to get more tokens for your bag. Because it's a bag builder, you want to get good, better tokens and call the bad ones, right? Uh, so you want to try and do that. You're going to build up your rainforest with animals and trees. And place them in certain places. Yeah, they gotta, you got to try. To maximize that score. It's like a big Cascadia. Yes. A lot of people might have heard of Cascadia. It feels Love Cascadia. Like that. But with a lot more going on. I mean, it's not like a lot more. It's, a, it's not like a heavy game, but it's a medium game. But that, but that's how I how I feel when I'm playing it. Is that it's got those same scoring things as Cascadia. Yeah, you're is that, working to get the tiger next to this and yeah. the parrot next to the tree and and all this. Different or if you've thing. got a monkey, you want to make sure to have so many monkeys around it. Or you're trying to get yeah. birds next to trees. Or you're trying to get other right. things. You know. Uh, the alligators next to other and some things are bigger than others because the alligators take up two spaces whereas everything else takes up one but you have to put them in the right environments and so the alligator has to go a little bit in the water and a little bit on something else and it doesn't matter what the something else is or uh whatever the constraint is yeah anyway um so you're doing all that while you're managing your bag of tokens you might be like why didn't i pull that one green leaf to make what i need to happen and so you're managing your your bag of tokens, which is always fun. Bag builders are fun. Love bag builders. Um, then you're working up your way these on these different tracks to gain points. Uh, so there, there's a lot to think about as you're going. There's cards you can purchase for water. So every resource is valuable in its own way. Right. And so that's why it's good. No porcupines. porcupines. No porcupines. No. Hello, Giggles. So that is our shared number seven. I know. Life of the Amazonia from Bad Comet. Yeah, it's fun. It's worth playing. My number six game. Oh, I should say that we're going to stream it at some point. It's on, yeah. it's on the stream it's pile. It's on the stream pile. Yes. Yes. So your number six. We just streamed it. Yeah, we just streamed this. And it's, one. And it's not on your list. I know. I mean, well, it, it must, it must, it's a good game. I haven't seen your top. So Steph does a new to me blog, which is coming out on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah, working on it right now. I've not seen it, so I don't know where this hits. On yeah, under the desk. Right, right this minute. <laughs> so I don't know where this rates on your list. It's close. I mean, and then you can't fit them all. So I had a lot of games this month that were rated seven to seven point five. I think I had maybe over half of them. That's amazing. Like over half of them are sevens to seven point five. So that that is to me a good game. Right. Which. Some of them are keepers, some of them are not. So, so yeah, it's right there on that it's line. It's on that line. Uh, so, but e all of them are solid. Yes. This is a solid game. It just didn't make my top ten. That's all. 
Um, okay. I, I was like, have you played it before? I didn't know. So just making sure. Um, it's Footprints by Chili Fox Games. Like I say, we just streamed it. In we this, did just stream it. In this game, uh, we are cave people trying to progress along uh, this land. And you're leaving your footprints and your cave drawings and your uh, little marks along the way so that your descendants can find them. And you're trying to do this uh, as best you can and get an uh, honorable funeral at the end, which I have missed both times. Because I just <laughs> run barely out of steam right at the very end. This time it was because I stood in your way. Well, that might have a lot to do with it. <laughs> Not sorry. Um, Two. So uh, this game, uh, each, each, uh, I guess, cave clan. So I was the horse clan on the stream. You've got the bird and the... It plays up to six, and there's yeah. six different clans that are all a little bit different. Yeah, and I think that this would be even better with more players. Um, yeah, but because then you can chop, skip, and jump. Over right. People. Yeah. And we'll see. Each of the clans has a different deck makeup. Some are going to be uh, able to move on the ice more. Some are going to be able to move through the plains more. Some are going to be able to move through the mountains more, uh, through the rocks. Um, yeah. But I think that the those of you who know me and know the type of games that I like. Know that I love, 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 love multi-use cards. Battlestar has them, Warehouse has them, and Footprints has them. When you're going to play a card, you're going to either take the top action or the bottom action. I love the difficulty of those decisions. Yeah. So that doing the bottom action is generally better early game because it yes. helps boost your, your little track to gain you more movement later. Which will make you go farther, yeah. But if you only need like one step in the grassland, maybe you do take the top one so then you can hurry up and get to the next section. Mm -hmm. it's and that's what I did. I, w I was like, I'm going to go really quickly. And you went one space. I was one really space. slow. Dude. And one space. Yeah, and I was like, oh. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's the interesting decisions that you can make in this game. You know, and can you pull it off at the very end? And I almost did. You almost did. Uh, no, it's good because you have four cards you get to choose from each turn. Yes. Uh, so you might not, you might want to save this one because you see in, in the, in, on the board, it's all laid out. So you're like, I need ice one later. So I need to save this ice one, which I didn't do. I should have done. And so like, I should have actually analyzed the board. That would have been smart. <laughs> However, I did make because it. Because there was a big old ice strip right at the very end of like, I want to save that ice card. I really need it. Um. So yeah. Definitely good decisions to be had in that game. Uh, it's it's a I like it quite a bit. G uh, says Root has some good multi-use cards. Gibbs, it's one of the few games I have not played yet, and you you think I'll like it though? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I didn't really care. For you didn't care for it. Uh, it's a lot. But take that. You will see. Yeah, I'm not big on take that. And matter of fact, one of the games that will remain unnamed uh, that was on my list had a little, it, it would have made my list, but there's a little bit too much take that for That's me. Fair. And so, yeah. But I, I am looking forward to playing Root at some point. I'm not a really big on, on take that so much. And you kind of have to be because Root is also a race. So it's, it's uh, not only take that, but it's a oh, race. Oh, and you're not big on race games. No, so it's whoever can. And I'm fine with race games. To 10 points. Right. First, we'll win. And so if somebody's getting close, well, then you're going to go gang up on them. Oh, of course. And so then, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, it's the same thing with Dune Imperium. Yeah, it's like, you know, <laughs> oh, you're about to hit 10 points. Yes. No, we're going to pile on you and then try to get ahead. And um, But yeah, certainly worth checking out Footprints from Chili Fox Games. Uh, Eva, we are not going to Essen, but... Uh, I wish we could. You know, Maybe next year. Maybe next year. So great. Um. So yeah. Uh, if anyone has a place to crash next year, yeah. uh, that'd be great. Um. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Uh, okay, so now we were on your number six. Oh wait, that's my number five. It's a lot of crossover today, huh? And that it's it was just meant to be. Meant to be. So speaking of pandemic. <laughs> speaking of pandemic, this is in the pandemic system of games. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars, the Clone Wars from Z-Man Games. Yeah. 
Uh, this is on our to stream pile. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Uh, it's also sitting with Fall of Rome on the stream pile. So I propose that we play both on the same day because they're both <laughs> pandemic system games. <laughs> And I love Fall of Rome. I also love Star Wars The Clone Wars. Uh, so in Star Wars The Clone Wars, you've got a whole bunch of planets in front of you. And you're trying to make sure that uh, the bad guys don't get out of control. So you have to take uh, your little uh, uh, Jedi mover and uh, try to you know, take out some of uh, the bad guys to make sure that they don't spread. and uh, Sometimes you can fight them from a distance. Sometimes you have to be in the space, but it all depends on on uh, on who your your power is and what what you decide to do. So, um, but yeah, ultimately, if you can, um, uh, the the bad guy, which I think there are what four of them in there. I can't I can't remember, but I think that there are four of them. But they each have a, yeah, a different probably. way of doing things. And uh, the one we were playing, if they if they walk onto your space, then uh, you take damage, which is one of the ways that you can lose, lose cards. Yeah, uh, and you and you'll lose cards, and you don't want to do that because you need those cards. Um, but it, it takes pandemic and twist it into uh, a really thematic game. I think. Yeah, for me, it doesn't even really feel like pandemic, while it does feel like pandemic. It feels very different. It, it does. It, it because it, like you, you're not outbursting into other planets, right? There's a different mechanic. But it, yeah, it's, it's a different mechanic, but it's it's got that same flavor. Yeah, yeah, because you're still flipping cards and adding to those different. Like you like you're like you don't want it to go bust because then bigger ships are gonna come out and uh, on that planet, and mm -hmm. so it's harder to like manage. But it's also it's good. It it does a good job. I'm not I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but I am. Like I I I've enjoyed all the movies I've seen, and I'll go see new ones and stuff. But I'm not like, oh, and ramble off all these names. I have no idea. I have no idea who's in there. <laughs> I I can't do it. I don't know the characters or anything. So. so I didn't watch the Clone Wars animated thing, right? I did sure. watch I did watch the movies. I was not a fan of the of the prequel trilogies one, two, and three, and so like this time period is sort of like eh for me uh but i have watched you know and or and you know oh, all of the stuff. and mandalorian and things like that but um i am also not the biggest star wars fan i'm more of a trek fan that's not to say that i don't love the star wars universe because i do um you know, I was always wanted to be Luke Skywalker when I was growing up because I mean that was the I big mean he's cool thing. I mean, I was seven when Star Wars came out, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, this is so cool." Um, but yeah, I I do enjoy uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Yeah, I think I also enjoy it more than Fall of Rome. Uh, Cosmic Beat said he it didn't Fall of Rome didn't really jive for him, but mm. um, he really loved Clone Wars. So very cool. I I agree that I think I prefer Clone Wars, but I still think I like the other one. Um, what? Um. War, what's that? War, not Warhammer. It's the War. I can't remember. Craft. Warcraft. Warcraft. <laughs> I'm like, what's that second part of that word? World of Warcraft. The, the king, the Lich King. I still like that one the best of the Pandemic series because it gives me more of like a character vibe, and then I can go around. It, it feels more of like a Pathfinder type of game to me. Uh, so that's why I like. I like one. Iberia. I mean, I I. I tend to really enjoy the pandemic the style systems, games. Systems, yeah. Yep. They've uh, been a good job with them, that's we, for sure. We also got to play test one. We did. That has not come out yet. Yeah. And we take we play tested this two years it's ago. It's been a minute. It's been quite a while. So we'll see. I, I um, think they're gonna keep making different versions. <laughs> he says, What? <laughs> um I can't reveal anything, but it, it's got some really cool things going on um yeah i, so, I, I, I that we'll still see more for in the system i think so the pandemic system. yeah yeah i i fully expect to see more um yeah <laughs> i'm trying to i was like yeah what things can i say 
No, I can't say anything. I can't, I can't say anything. Can't I really can't this say anything. It might have been canned. I, it might have, yeah. It's been a while, so. Yeah. We were definitely play tested that, though. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's been two full years because I think it was September 21 that we yeah. played it. Um, but been yeah. It's been a minute. It's, it's been a minute. But um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that when it hits. But until then, you can check out Star Wars The Clone Wars from Z9 Games. Yes. Um, my number, what are we on? Five. Five, because that was your five, my six. Right. So now my number five is one we've already talked about. What? I know. It's the Lord of the Rings Adventure to Mount Doom. Mm. So I really like this. I thought we had a great time playing it. I guess my one concern with this one is how much replayability. That's my con- That's my is. concern. Because we generally see all the cards, or most of the cards, mm-hmm. each time you go to through the different sections. Uh, now, it will vary based on your dice rolls and, and what your decisions are. But for the most part, you're probably going to have a similar experience. Uh, so that's my biggest concern about the game. However, for now, I don't mind playing it several times and seeing, you know, how. And ultimately, like yeah. Well, I mean, let's think about this. If it's, you can play a game you know, six, seven times, then that's a successful game, right? Yeah. Because... You can see playing it that many times. Absolutely. Because it's it's like an hour-long game. It goes pretty it quick. Goes, it goes fairly so quick. So, for me, I think this is a really good family weight, like, adventure-type game. Um, and it does things differently than the Lord of the Rings Silverline game from... Mm. That Avalon Hill? I can't remember. Um, but, uh, yeah, our, you use cards in order to defeat things and, and move to the next areas, um, which I actually want to play that on stream at some point. Okay. When we've got time, because we have so many review games to do. <laughs> um, and yeah, you haven't played it. I know. So. I should play it. Aldi's been wanting me to play too. Uh, well, yeah, because it's so good. Apparently it's yeah. so good. And it has three expansions, which... I've only played one of the three expansions. Okay. So okay. there is that. But um, so uh uh but you would highly recommend Lord of the Rings Adventure to Mount yeah, Doom I from Cosmos that. even more than I would because it was number five on your list, number eight on my list. Yeah. yeah. Just whatever you're in the mood for at the That's time, right. right? That's right. Well, speaking of things that are number eight on people's lists, but number four on my list. Oh yeah. We've talked about this one. It is World Wonders from Arcane Wonders. Um, when we played this the first time, I was building everything right along my river. <laughs> and then out came uh, all of these things that needed to be built across the river. And I couldn't build across the river because <laughs> I had jammed up my river. Yeah. And there are two things that I can't possibly do in front of me. My one, my one thing is, is I wish that we could, there were a way to flush the wonders especially in a two-player game um because if both of us do that which i think we did those wonders just sit there and clog up everything that's sitting there that said i think that there is a really fun and solid game here so play with more people because you just add new tiles to the to the lineup of tiles yes. and so it's, it's just easier to you can add people uh pretty easily uh, yes so we only played it with two players. So. We only played it with two. I think it will be even better with more players. Uh, there's one side of the board that is symmetric and has a lake in the middle. There's one side of the board that is asymmetric and has uh, a differently shaped river. Obviously, asymmetry. Am I right? That's what we chose. Well, so definitely uh, something that I recommend. World Wonders from Arcane Wonders. Hey, yeah. Bree. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's in a spiel right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're not watching us. No. Uh, my number, what is it? Four. Four. I see, it didn't make your list. It did not make my list. So for me, this was like so fun. I. Mm. It's called uh, Too Many Cooks, which actually is funny because there's another game called Too Many Cooks that we had played. Yes. And you like, put this as Too game. Many Cooks 2023. <laughs> yeah, because the BG Stats doesn't allow the same name game, which is a little weird it's thing. Weird. But Too Many Cooks is a real-time, uh, cooperative, puzzly type game. It actually reminded me a lot of Decorum, mm. uh, where you are trying to fill 
your recipes of what you need. Like maybe you need three uh, peppers or something and only three, or you can only have like one of this thing. And so you're, you're working with other people. You can't tell them exactly what you, you need. You can't tell them what you need. But you're switching things in and out of, of your like stew or whatever the pot. Um, and so you're trying to make it happen where everybody's okay. And there's different levels. We just played easy and, mm-hmm. and we won, but I can see like playing medium and losing horribly. <laughs> Is it over on the podcast? Oh yeah, yeah, it's over there. Uh, I definitely want to stream this in the near future. I, I had a lot of fun with this. It's just chaotic, uh, because it's real time. And if you run out of time, well, then you lose. And so they had, I think we used an app that they had. So it was like. They made sounds and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then there's like a common goal that we also know. And But what's good about this game that Decorum doesn't exactly have is that when you have something correct on the board, you you flip your card around. to know, So you know, like, I have two of mine correct and out of the three. Yeah, I can see physically on the backs of her cards yeah. whether it's good or not. And then if you do something and I turn it around to bad. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That card was really important to her for one reason or another. Or the one you put in is really bad for my for my other card. So it's one of those two things. So because it's like it's 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 food on a grid. And it might be where I have to have all of the corners be purple or something. something be yellow or whatever so and if so you, if you remove that one green card i need with a red card well you know i ne- either needed it to be green or i needed it to, to not, not be red, red. <laughs> exactly and i think that that has a lot of the decorum vibes on there oh for this, sure this is the game it, you know? this is the game that has the most potential to go up or down on my list based on repeated plays i think and I, I don't think this would get old because there are so many different levels and so many different cards. Like, we didn't see, like, we really didn't, any yeah. of the easy cards. We uh, were using seven of them, and then there's still a lot more. Right. And that's why, since we haven't played all of those, it didn't make my list, but it does have the potential to go up yeah. on we'll, my we'll list. We'll stream it in the near future, because I, I, I had a lot of fun with that yeah. one. Um, so that was my number four. Too Many Cooks from Good Games Publishing. That's right. And guess what? Guess what? We have the My same. number three is your number three. And this does not continue all the way up. I promise it you this. I do not. Um, <laughs> because I've got a game that you have already played. Yeah, yeah. Later on. Yeah. But for now, we got number three. It is Canopy Evergreen. And it's not an expansion nope. to Canopy. It is a standalone. A redo, basically, yep. of Canopy. Yep. It's almost like Canopy, the advanced edition, I think. Yeah. Whereas Canopy was primarily designed to be a two-player experience, though it does play more. It's yeah. primarily... It's a good two-player it, game. It's, it's a great two-player game. Yeah. And I think, I can't remember what it made on our lists when, when we had it yeah. on there, but it was probably up there fairly high. This, I think, takes it... To a whole nother level, uh, with the, the addition level, mm, with the addition of a, <laughs> a game board, uh, a personal game board, instead of having just cards where you're building up trees, just in this forest is not really any sort of map, right? Uh, but this, you've got a map that you're trying to work towards, and you're trying to build trees in your forest, and you want trees of varying heights. In order to get bonus tokens, and it, we actually played it on hard mode where we add the tokens face down or so to have them face up. I like having them up because then you can kind yeah. of plan where to build to. Yeah, I agree. Um, but um, what was I going to say? Um, so uh, Canopy Evergreen is designed to be a true multiplayer experience. Yep. So. Um, whenever drafting cards, and we can't really show this really well with two players. No, because the, the way you play Can- Canopy Evergreen with two players is more like Canopy in that you have three piles and you work your way through the piles. I'm going to look um, at pile one. Don't want it. Add a card. Look at pile two. Don't want it. Add a card. Look at pile three. Hopefully I want it because if I don't want this, I'm going to have to take a card blind. Yeah. Um, and give you access to even oh, more cards. cards. Um. Yeah. But in Canopy Evergreen, you take from the left pile, which is available 
to me and this person over here. Or and then I go to the center pile, which is available to me and everybody else at the table. Right. And then I check the right pile, which is available to me and Steph. So if Michael and I were in a four player game and I was across from him, he would never see the pile. I'd never see that's this. That's over pile. on like in between me and person B. Um so well, so there's a question from Cosmic Beat. Is it still good for two players or stick with Canopy for two? It is absolutely good for two it's players. It's definitely good. So I actually recently played Canopy because I had to send mm -hmm. back the prototype. And Jonathan was curious about playing uh, Canopy Evergreen. Mm -hmm. It's on Kickstarter mm -hmm. now still, I think. Um, so we just played regular Canopy. And so it had been a minute since I played regular Canopy. So I actually got the full experience mm -hmm. of having played the recent Evergreen so, hey, Canopy. So, th hey, this yeah. is a good comparison. No, okay. So if you're familiar with Canopy, there's a whole lot of uh, animals in the deck. So you want to try and collect the animals to match up to get bonus points and stuff. But in, mm -hmm. in Canopy Evergreen, you actually have to work to gain food in order to purchase the animals. It's a much harder... Uh, thing to do. Yeah, okay, you're so, drafting those animals. You're not. You're not you're taking them. Spending your. Food you're not taking them in the piles. Right. Yeah. So it's harder to get the animals. So you're you're picking and choosing these animals more closely and wisely because you're also trying to collect uh, like a set with these animals, like a chain of different forests. Uh, so it it's not easy to collect the animals, unlike in regular canopy where they're just coming at you and you have all the, I had like seven powers. I'm like, okay, now you have to do this and now I have to do this and then I get this best special bonus. So I kind of liked the less animals of evergreen. Mm -hmm. There's less to keep track of because with canopy, I had like, I don't know, like five powers that I was like, okay. And I would forget to do something. I'm like, oh, I should have done that. And because you had so much you were managing over in canopy. Which is still fine. The game is still great. I like. I really like Canopy. And so if you do mostly play two players, it's still a great game. Uh, however, Canopy Evergreen does have a lot of like, like elegance, more elegance to it because of your you're really like limited on what you're doing. Um, so and it works with more people. Yeah. So I told Jonathan. So I think know, it's good. I do think you should just get Evergreen because it works great with two people. Yeah. And it plays with more people yeah. very well. And I rarely I rarely say that. Uh, I if there's a two player version of a game and a multiplayer version of a game that usually don't fire each other, I think that Canopy Evergreen for me fires Canopy just because it's it's like Canopy Deluxe, it's like Canopy Advanced. Yeah, I I think it has it has what Canopy has and more. Now there are going to be some people who prefer the small uh, the simplicity of Canopy, it's the small smaller game. box, yeah. things like that. Um, I I just I prefer. Canopy cards. Evergreen. It's all cards. Yes. Uh, evergreen will have like actual trees that you would like, assemble. So it yeah. feels more of like a board game. Now, I don't need the little trees to assemble. Yeah, yeah. It's visual. It's right there in front of you. And it's also a, easy to knock things over. But that's fine. Um, I can uh, look over my clumsy Bonus cells. tokens that you get for building the different yes. trees. I think that's clever because... If you can get that token early, you'll get it for all three rounds. Yeah. So there's something to be saying. And about there's those not tokens. one way to win. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah. So like you might go after um all of the things that that will give you more food. I might go after the sun and the and the rain tokens. Yep. yep. Um and both are valid strategies. I I don't think that there is just one way to win. And that it sometimes I feel that problem with a lot of games out there. Yeah. For this, it's like if you see the trees, you go for the forest, but you might not see the flowers that give you food, so you won't get any animals. So Michael might have all the animals, but I might have all the trees, and it kind of balances out. So you can't see the flowers for the trees? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really good. I, I mean, I, I, I was impressed by it. Yeah. So definitely, I think, check out Canopy Evergreen from Weird City Games. Yeah, that's for sure. Your? No. no my. Yeah. My number two is Nucleum. From board and dice. That's, yeah, it's a big game that we just played. Um, so. And yeah, most months this would probably be my number one game. Um, <laughs> my hello tech. My problem with Nucleum is this: I don't see where my strategy is failing so horribly. Um, because it is failing horribly. I'm just, I'm just really good, I guess. I, I love what Nucleum <laughs> is doing. 
I, I, I truly, and David, if you're listening, I love what Nucleum is doing. I love how it does it. Um, I, I love the mechanics. I don't love that you lapped Susan on the board. You literally scored more than double what she scored. And that, that, that's the, that's the only thing that worries me about this game. Is if you, if you, if I were to play like 10 games and then come back and play, would I like double lap you? Right. Is experience that much better? Are you that much better than people? And that worries me because games like that, I, I personally don't like games with huge imbalance. I, I tend to agree with that. Um, Darwin's Journey tends to have that. Yeah. Um, if you don't fall into a good rhythm in Darwin's Journey, then you're going to fall behind. And I don't feel like there's a catch up. Uh, I don't know if that's actually true or not, at least with Nucleum. Uh, I was just taking whatever shot I had. It. It's, it's a it's a timely game where you need to take the chances as you get them. Right. If you can afford to do this thing right now and get the bonus and get the benefits, you do it. Right. And so you have to be on point at all times. It's, right. it's a tactical, as it comes to you, you need to know the best move to play. And it's going to change depending on what other it people do. It's absolutely going to change. So it's, a, it's a fluid kind but of is the thing. Que- is it just, it, is it that you got lucky two games or that... You're seeing things I'm not seeing on those two games. It's possible. Or, and that's that's what I'm worried about. That said, I see a fantastic game here to where I know it deserves this number two ranking for this month. Um, I never want to give up on a game just because I did poorly. And I didn't really do all that poorly. I was only 50 points behind. <laughs> 130 to 180 the first time we played. And then it was 138 to 210 when we played on stream. I learned from my mistakes. I guess. I, you didn't have mistakes. I did. No. Clearly I did. I did better. Well, that's then that. And that is my question. Uh, how beat 210 is like did i have my best game and now the game is done for me like i don't, I don't know then th- that's what i'm wondering it's questionable um, that's for sure that that said i mean i was I, I fell in love with the game when we got the demo at the board and dice booth yeah really cool uh, at uh gen con and uh i don't know that that david was upset with us when we when we <laughs> were like okay void fall is not for us this game is for us. Yeah. Absolutely. So I I don't at all want to give up on this game. Right. Um, just because I don't see where I'm failing at this game. But clearly I am. And so was James and Susan. Right. And so everybody has asymmetricals starting and a bill and goals but you had a different one i know and i had i don't know susan's because i'm like well she did this poorly right if i lapped her well let's let's give me a handicap right and now i worked with that right i worked with that pretty well i thought so you have to work towards the what you're handed and that's just how it is but if you love deep crunchy euros this is there's a lot going on it's a must buy i think yeah there's a lot going on right now i wasn't you say there's a lot going on. I wasn't confused or unsure of what to do. I mean, I was I was on it. Then everything makes sense. It's just I was, there's a lot of little rules and there's a lot of things that you kind of have to remember, like the fact that you can use other people's railroads. That I missed. Great. That was like it's like, <laughs> and you tell me that's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I think so, it's forgetting. So it. <laughs> maybe maybe there's maybe there's something else that I need that I need to be looking at. And I think that that'll get better with more plays. Yeah. And I think that this game deserves more plays. Yeah, it's a good game. It's really good. And that is Nucleum from one of my favorite companies, Board and Dice. Dice. All right. Your number two did not make my list. See, I was a bit surprised by that, actually. It's a little random for me. Okay, so. But that's okay. Let's talk about it. And talk about it. My number two is Beacon Patrol. From Pandasaurus. Yes, this is a cooperative uh tile placement game kind of along the lines of carcassonne uh 
except you're limited to boat movement on water. So every tile will have some sort of water uh, that you're going to need to place by adjacent water tile. So your boat will be moving, but you're trying to like surround these different red, like landmarks, buoys and lighthouses and stuff. If you can surround them, you'll get points for each of those uh, features on the board. And so you're working and making little islands. Yeah. And you're, you're working together with uh, everybody at the table uh, you have three tiles that you can place on your turn and you can have three extra bonus movement. Uh, so if you're like on the wrong side of the board at the beginning of the game, it's easy to get around. But as the board grows, you're like, how do I get over there? To and play I'm this? on the other side of the board from Steph. But you get this one cool action where I'm like, this tile will work well for Michael where he's at. So let's just switch that and you can prepare for your next turn. And I take one of your tiles or maybe he has the perfect tile that I need and we switch so you can switch one tile each turn as well. So that kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility. Uh, and so it's a lot of fun, like trying to build out this perfect, uh, like, main side harbor land. <laughs> it's mm -hmm, fun. Mm -hmm. it, I think the, the artwork is charming. I think the theme is fun. Um, for me, it just it's a really nice game. So I, I quite enjoyed it. Now, just because it didn't make my list doesn't mean it's a bad game. I'm, I am I enjoy playing the game, and I will enjoy playing it when we do it on the stream. Yeah, we will stream it for sure. Um, so don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the play. Sure. Um, I wonder how much replayability it, it has. Because yeah. it is very Carcassonne-like. and once you, Replay Carcassonne. Yeah, but I mean, once you've done the the cooperative version and done it rather well, I mean... How much replayability doesn't have, I don't know. But uh, if you enjoy cooperative games, it's certainly worth checking out. Yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised by this one. Yeah. And so for me, this would be a keeper. Uh, maybe we don't play it all the time, but just playing it every once in a while for me, that, that's fun. And it's Absolutely. fast, too. So it's yeah, okay. it is fast. So yeah, definitely. It, easily. it makes you think, like, oh, well, if we can do this over here. and the, the, I like talking it out. Yep, I... I, I also enjoyed this game and just barely missed my list. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely worth checking out. Beacon Patrol from Pandasaurus. And it's time for my number one game. Yeah. I learned this last BGG Con November because I had to. Yeah. It's you from had it's, to. it's from, from one of my favorite publishers. A Porta? A Porta. Yeah. I mean, they did The Magnificent, which is one of my all-time favorite games. Like, super love it. I've been following them. You've never played Santa Marini, uh, Santa Maria, which is a dice, it's a dice playthrough okay. game, which is from a port as well. I think he's going to love that whenever he plays it. But Michael did finally learn Revive. Revive. And yeah. you played that again this weekend. I, 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 since we played it recently. Uh, you, we played it so you could learn it so we could play the expansion soon. Mm -hmm. I wanted to teach my friend Michelle how to play because it's on her unplayed shelf. And, you know, since we played it recently, I was able to teach it really easily. And we were, oh, okay. uh, so we were thinking about playing this. Yeah. We're just throwing her in with the, the expansion. expansion. And that would have given me a chance to play the expansion. But then I was like, you know what? We're going to have to play revive base game on the stream. That's true. And the expansion mixes in all the components. And so we'll have to yeah, like tiles, all of the components things. back separate mm -hmm. again. We didn't want to do that because I want to do a base game video with the base game rules. And then when we do the expansion, it'll just have the expansion rules. So we don't have to go from scratch with that. Yeah. Um, so we'll have a revive night really yeah. soon. Uh -huh. yeah, um, maybe Wednesday we'll do it actually. Uh, and I would have played that game with y'all, but I just had a major headache. Yeah. So. That said, I did stay for all of the rules to make sure, because what do I do? I do all, all the, the rules. rules. <laughs> and so I wanted to make sure that, you know, that not only did you have all the rules right, that I had all the rules internalized for whenever I'm going to share it with you guys. Revive is uh, two, two really top-notch Euros. Making the top of my list. No. Um, this is another top notch, deep, crunchy Euro uh, where uh, you've got uh, multiple tracks to go up. You've got like a gray track, a green track, and a yellow track. And not only that, as you move up these tracks, it's basically on this big gear type of wheel. And as you move past things, you unlock either abilities or half of abilities that the other color has to also go past in order to also unlock 
that ability. It's hard to move up the tracks, too. Yeah. So you have to kind of plan if you really do want to move up those tracks. Yep. Um, and on your turn, you're going to be using the cards that you've got on your display. And what are these cards? These are... Multi-use cards. Multi-use cards. <laughs> what does Michael love? Michael loves multi-use cards. This has multi-use cards. When I first learned this last year, I'm like, this is going to be a Michael game for sure. I mean, yeah. But we only picked it up at Gen Con, so I was really happy to finally get it. Yes. And as predicted, number one game. And I knew I, it would be. And like I said, if I had already played this, or I hadn't played this this month, Nucleum would have hit that top spot. Oh, for sure. And it would have well deserved it. But revive right over the top. I, I knew it would be. And you were right. I knew it would be. It's probably going to be in the top for the. This was the top for this. This was your number seventeen of seventeen or eighteen of the year last year. I'm surprised. I went back and though. looked. Okay, I was wondering. I so went back and looked. It's hard when you only play a game once. Yes. I knew it with more plays. Like I've now played it three times, and I'm like, this game is so good. I'm just so bad at it. <laughs> but you know, I you know, I really do enjoy it quite a bit. So uh, whenever you are uh, playing one of these cards, it's going to be a gray or green or yellow card like your three tracks. Um, and that relates to the three different resources that are uh, in the game. And so you're going to play the card to the top of your board and activate a lot of bonuses or to the bottom of your board and activate other bonuses. And you're going to be spending your resources in order to expand out on the map and to get uh, to claim end game scoring bonuses. Um, it's it's just fantastic how they make all of that work. Oh, and did I mention the character powers? What is it? What's the word? Asymmetrical. I'm like? Asymmetrical. Asymmetric. Crunchy Euro. Multi-use cards. It sounds like a campaign that we haven't scratched. It's not a campaign. It's like a... Different, yes, it, I think it is a can. I think they call it a campaign, like a five game. And yes, I want to play it, of course. absolutely. So, uh, we were like looking at the back of these characters because if you turn them over, there's other abilities that, and then we're like, What's that token? Oh, it's because I haven't punched that board yet. Because if you play the campaign, I'm like, Oh, I guess we need to explore this base game too. But I also want to play this new expansion that just came out, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm very excited to try that. Uh, it adds a whole new track and stuff. I'm curious. It has some really cool player powers that I looked at. So, Cosmic B says, want revive, but $100 Canadian is a bit pricey and I don't need it. Tell you what. Watch our video when we create it and then decide. you can decide whether you need it. <laughs> I mean, need is a strong word, right? Of course. I mean... You can always I mean, wait until you find it used later down the line. And that, but that's what we do with a lot of our games. Uh, believe it or not, I mean, even the life of a reviewer is not all new games, new games, new games. We end up getting a lot of games used. Yeah, So I buy a lot of games used. And uh, we actually ought to do a video one of these days uh, just to tell you guys how to get into the used game market. Um, I used to do a lot of buying and selling of games before I even met Steph where I would uh, get rid of games that, that I, I didn't need or want anymore, and I would get two more behind it used and sell something old and buy two more used and eventually ended up with 700 games with literally, I kid you not, zero financial outlay. Zero. There you go. That's good. Believe it or not. Can you do it? Of course. You can absolutely do it. Cosmic Beast said, I just did my first map trade. That was fun. Oh, yes. yes. Map, map trade's trade, great. <laughs> perfect way of doing it. Yes. Absolutely. Start there. Get into it that way. And, then... and the first rule of math trades is don't trade for something that you're not interested in getting uh, of getting the trade because you will get your worst trade possible. Yeah. But it, it, as long as you want it and they want it, it's and a good trade. Misclick. Like, don't, don't misclick. Don't misclick. Don't see like, oh, Amerigo and hit that, but it's really the Amerigo promo or something. Exactly. You're going to get that promo. You're going to get it because yeah. you're going to get your worst trade. So for those of you who don't know what math trades are, hey, go check them out on, on Board Game Geek. There yeah. are a lot of good um, videos and walkthroughs to basically handhold you through the whole process. Yeah, that's a great, great tool. Absolutely. All right. My number so that's my number one. Yeah, my number one. Is... Ba -ba -da, obviously, 
Nucleum. Nucleum. Poor board and dice. Yeah, I mean, you know, the first play, it's like, it was, it was a lot, kind of, just playing through. And then our second play, two-player, went really well. Um, I really like the action selection in this game, because it's just a tile, it has two actions, and then you're taking it, I mean, there's different things you can do, but that's primarily what you're going to be doing, is using these tiles to take actions. Uh, and so... It's their bite-sized actions. I mean, yeah, you could be doing a little bit more on your turn that kind of combos, but for the most part, it's pretty quick for what you're doing. Yeah, Susan was like saying, I want to do this so I can do this and do this and do this. I'm like, you can't do all of it. Take one, one bite. Time. Take one bite of that elephant. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You have to take small bites on these big, crunchy Euro games. Right. Because not all of them have super combos. I understand that you have to do A before you do B sometimes. But you got to take that bite. Just take that bite. Yeah. Figure out your order and then take that first bite. It's also, I don't want to say a deck building game, but you'll be culling the, your action tiles and gaining new action tiles as you go. So you're trying to like save your really good ones uh, because if you lose it to the rail because you can put your tile on a rail track. I don't think that might be my problem. Yeah, I think that that is might be. Using the rail tiles too much. Well, no, I, I think And not relying on other people. I think it's important to do uh, to claim your stake on the rail that you need to get connections for. But using which tile is so important and how important is that action to you uh, do you need to save it to be able to use it on your player board instead? So I like that the the, the resource management, because you have to manage your people and your money. It's all super tight. So there's a lot of good decisions in trying to figure it all out. I think one I'm of the problems. I'm actually pretty good, apparently. I mean, yeah, you are. So that, that, well, I think that one, of the problems, like one of the problems is, you know, I was trying to do my thing. And trying to stop you on one of them. Nobody stopped you on the other tracks. Nobody challenged you. And I'm like, I can't read you on this <laughs> last thing. And then you're like, I want to claim this and this and this. And, and so nobody can stop you with getting those purple tiles. Anyway. Um, so you're you're good about blocking, Jeff. I tried. Oh my I, goodness, I tried. Susan. James does it sometimes, but James does it sometimes. They do it as much. Like you're not, they're not actively looking for ways to block. I think you do it. I try and do it. If I know a game particularly well, I will definitely like r Russian railroads. I'll be like, he's got to go there, so I'm gonna go do that instead. So he'll be so sorry later. Oh yeah, we have um, Ultimate Railroads to stream oh, right there. Yeah. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's. There are times when I'm really good at seeing other people's plays and what they need to oh, do. Oh, you're fantastic at seeing other people's plays. I try to be, uh, but I'm not so sure. Like they, nobody seemed to be doing that as much as you in nuclear man, specifically. I was terrible at it. You were trying. I, well, I'm, and my problem. I, I, I will go back to it again. I think my problem, like I say, I think that there's a problem in something I'm doing. I think it has to do with the track, with using my tiles for the tracks. I'll, I'll figure it out. I, I know I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> he wants to play it again. I want to play it again. Yeah. So whenever, you know, if, if Dan wants to play it, maybe we'll play it with Dan. Uh, Dan Con. But it's gone. But yeah, so that was my number one. Nucleum, I thought it was really pretty fantastic. And I'm not even like a network kind of gamer, but it's not really a pick you know, up and deliver. It's not a network. It it's not a is, but it's not. But it's not. Because yeah. you're not, not you're not actually transporting it. Yeah. And you're not really using your network. Yeah, and, and I'm not getting paid if somebody uses my track. You know, it's right. Like, there's no benefit for that. So and that's kind of nice not to worry about something like that. Because your complaint on a lot of games is people don't use my stuff. Don't use my stuff. Yeah. And so. you, if no one gets it, there's it's nothing fine. to worry about, it's right? Fine. Even though you were using my track all the time, so I feel like I should have got no, that. Well, I mean, you were using. You had to use mine because I used. I had built so much track. Yeah. But it's all good. Yeah. No, all right. It's cool. It's definitely worth checking out if you like heavy euros. 
running down my top 10. Number 10, Newsboys from Sashi and Sashi. Number 9, Gemini Gauntlet from Lynn Vander Games. Number 8, Lord of the Rings Adventure to Mount Doom from Cosmos. Number 7, Life of the Amazonia from Bad Comet. Number 6, Footprints from Chili Fox Games. Number 5, Star Wars The Clone Wars Z-Man Games. Number 4, World Wonders from Arcane Wonders. Number 3, Canopy Evergreen from Weird City Games. Number two, Nucleum from Board and Dice. And number one, Revive from Aporta Games. It's a good solid list. Uh, my number 10, Gemini Gauntlet from Lynn Vander Games. Uh, number nine, Captain Pepe Treasure Ahoy uh, from Haba. Number eight is World Wonders from Arcade Wonders. Number seven, Life of the Amazonia from Bad Comet. Number six is Star Wars The Clone Wars from z Games. Number five is Lord of the Rings Adventure to Mount Doom. Uh, from Cosmos. Number four is Too Many Cooks from Good Games Publishing. Number three is Canopy Evergreen from Weird City Games. Number two is Beacon Patrol from Pandasaurus. Number one is Nucleum from Board and Dice. Woo! And all, all of those were review copies. Every one of them, which Perfect. is not, doesn't usually happen like that. However, we have been trying to hit the Gen Con releases yeah. re as quickly as we can. There's Plenty of others we've still got to get to. Oh, yeah. So many. And some SM releases now, too. So mm -hmm. expect great things this October. We got some games. We got DanCon coming up. So Dan will be here. A lot of games will get played. through the games because that's what we do. And we can probably show you uh, some three and uh, three player and up games yeah. that we normally wouldn't get to show you because Dan will be sitting right here. I'm very excited for that. For yeah. sure. i uh, got to think about what we're going to stream. Uh, so, yeah, be sure to tune in uh, to twitch.tv slash BoardGamerStuff every Wednesday and Sundays where we stream three at, games. At 5 p.m. Central. At 5 p.m. Central, we restream three games minimum all the time. That's right. Yeah. So come join us on Twitch where we play all the games. And I read all, all the, the rules. rules. Right. <laughs> well, he says all the rules. He doesn't, like, read them. An audio. Book. I mean, you know, I want to make sure I get them. I teach the game fully with all the rules. All the rules. <laughs> so, for those on Twitch, we will be right back. 